that uh, women, youth and people with disability is a challenge in my country but in uh, our sub-region in general. It means that in our, in our countries for West Africa, we have to work more to have uh, inclusivity in our electoral process. But I note that we have made progress in West Africa. We have some countries is getting uh, results, like uh, uh, Senegal is making progress, and uh, Ghana is making progress, and uh, Nigeria also is making progress. We saw in the last election all efforts that was uh, done to have more participation with uh, people with disability and women. But we have to work more in our sub-region to have a, a democracy with quality. Of course that we have made progress because we, in our sub-region, all countries uh, adopt democracy in this moment. We have to improve our democracy. It means that we have to improve women, youth and people with disability. I take note a lot of good practices in for Nigeria for the other countries that we can try to implement in my country also for the next election. Because of that uh, symposium um, was very important opportunity to share good experience, good practice for the other countries in our super region. Um, so we work on with INEC to ensure that um, voters that are blind are able to cast their votes independently on and with some level of secrecy. And that was how we came about the Brave Bargain Guide, which you know, it's, it's a simple way of ensuring that voters that are blind vote um, with secrecy of their votes. And also INEC also provided the election the written instructions for deaf voters who online who go to the polling needs and don't know what to do. But you know, due to our intervention with INEC, you know, that has been able to be provided for INEC. So the first was saying congratulations to the disabled community. There are lots of things that they've been crying for. A few things are already happening. And we trust that um, going into the future elections, we and by also is November 16th, um, we're going to have uh, some of the lessons that were learned from the general elections. They're going to be implemented fully in those two elections and beyond. We hope that we're going to have, you know, more and more significant inclusivity in the electoral process. So what's our takeaway? Yeah, so the symposium is, um, is quite significant because it just gives, it avails other EMBs the opportunity to see what practices INEC has been able to put in place, what is working, and what is what you know, that is getting in their own state. So, We've shared recommendations, we've also shared materials, so we'll just be able to see how well uh, they can get more and more um, assistive materials you know, to support persons with disabilities. What are even the first steps, like the recommendation I made, you know, for them to first conduct polling it accessibility audit. If you don't conduct any polling it accessibility audit, you will not know the challenges that you have, and so you cannot even offer solutions. So the first step is conduct the audit. Then you ascertain the level of problems that exist. Then you can know exactly what materials, what strategy, what exactly you're going to do, how you're going to do it. So the first step is pulling it audit. And secondly, they must also open up their doors to disabled persons organizations. They are the ones that see the problem, that know the problem, and when they see the problem, you know, they make you see the problem and see how to solve the problem. Partnership with disabled persons and organizations is also a key one, uh, which are recommendations that we have made to them. And we are very hopeful that they will go back to their various countries and also implement those recommendations. And voila, that one day, inclusivity will be achieved in the target. I'm Jay Kepele, I'm the founder and CEO of the Abino Foundation. As you know, the Abino Foundation champion disability inclusion, mm -hmm. just like every other organization. Mm -hmm. We're not the only one, but we're, we played a major role. And our focus was on creating access
for inclusion of persons with disability. But strategically, we're interested in data. Uh, we wanted to get the data of eligible voters with disability and transmit them to INEC so that INEC will know where the cluster of persons with disabilities are so that at the end they can deploy the right material, electoral material that's required for the participation of those uh, individuals. And, and we did it not with experts, but with persons with disability. And we were able to deliver uh, 35,000 uh, respondents in 10 days, you know, through the use of technology. We did that also advocated for uh, assistive technology, you know, so that the likes of persons without reason can vote, magnifying glasses, that's how go to system, and so on and so forth. You know. And then finally, uh, the issue of policy, all these good ideas and best practices, if you don't document them, the next set of people that will come and take over the governance of the electoral body can discard them. So it's important that we have the right policy and the right uh, legal instruments that backs up the best practices, otherwise they become more important. Wow, excellent. Thank you. Thank you.